Hey, welcome everybody to N90X. If you're watching this video, it means you want to get your network pumped up. You want to fix your network problems. You want to get ready for Web 2.0. You want to fix security issues. You want to fix performance problems with your network, with your web applications. You want to improve the reliability and the resiliency of your network. So welcome and thank you for having the confidence in yourself and in me to watch this video series. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to install the Netscaler VPX on your Zen server. All right, check it out. Right here, I've got my Zen Center up and running on my workstation that's running Zen Center. Zen Center, as you know, is the management console for Zen Server. On the same machine, I've already downloaded the Netscaler VPX, the latest version. If you don't have a copy of the Netscaler VPX, you need to go to Citrix.com, log in, and download the VPX. If you don't have an account, you can register for one online. It's free. Once you have your VPX uh, file, it's here as a XVA, it's a virtual appliance, as you can see. It says Zen Server Virtual Appliance. It's the same code base that's on your, your Netscaler hardware platform, only it's been virtualized. So let's go ahead. We just have to double click on it and because I've got Zen Center up and running, it's going to pop into the import dialog box of Zen Center, as we see here. Import type is exported VM. So click that, click next. Select the server that you want to put it on and click next. Now, the Netscaler VPX requires 20 gigs of storage. So pick a storage repository that has at least 20 gigs of storage and then click on import. The import process begins. At this point here, you can uh, modify any network settings that you might have to. I'm going to just click Next. And here I've got the Start VM After Import. It is selected. I want to start it after we import, and then I want to click on Finish. Here's my virtual appliance. It's just starting. It's the one that's being installed. I'm going to click on the Console button of that virtual appliance. Takes a few seconds to pop up, and you can see it's already starting to boot the virtual appliance for the first time. It'll take about roughly 30 seconds. Another thing that you're going to need is a license key, a license file for your Netscaler VPX. Without the license file, this Netscaler virtual appliance will still run as Access Gateway Enterprise Edition, allowing you to have 10 users. So that's not bad if that's all you need. We'll talk about that in another video, how to use Access Gateway Enterprise Edition. Virtually all the features and functionality that you'll find on the Netscaler hardware platform, MPX for, for example, coming from Citrix, are also available it's in the VPX version. Now, the VPX is booted for the first time. It's going to ask me some simple networking questions. You need to know a Netscaler IP address. This is going to be the management IP address that you use to manage your Netscaler either through the command line, the CLI, or through the GUI. In this case, 192.168.5.240 is my Netscaler IP or NSIP. I need to enter a net mask. In this case, I have a class C or a slash 24 it's 255.255.255.0. Gateway, you need to know your default gateway. Put that in. Again, for your specific environment, you need to know this information and you can customize it for your specific environment. Uh, now we select four, for save and quit. Now what's gonna happen, this information is gonna be saved on the Netscaler, it's gonna reboot. When you see the login screen, in the console, you know that your Netscaler has booted up. Now I'm going to open up a browser, and you can open up any browser. I'm going to use Google Chrome, but you can use IE or you can use Firefox. Put in the IP address of the NSIP, in this case here. Put it in. 
it's going to give you the login screen for the GUI, the graphical user interface of the Netscaler. Now the default username and password is nsroot. So nsroot, nsroot, and then click login. Now when the Netscaler boots the GUI for the first time, it's going to load a configuration utility as it's doing now. And in this case, for the very first time, it's going to prompt a wizard. Wizard's going to pop up. A setup wizard, as we see here, setup wizard. It's going to ask us a few more questions. So when it pops up, click next. Here you can see the system configuration that we put in previously from the command line, from the console. I need to answer one more question. Mapped IP or subnet IP? A MIP or a SNP? Now what's the difference? If your backend infrastructure is on the same subnet, same network as your Netscaler IP, you use a MIP. If, it's, if your backend infrastructure is on a different subnet, you need a subnet IP. The MIP or the SNP subnet IP is the IP address that the Netscaler uses to talk to your backend infrastructure. And the MIP or the SNP is what the backend infrastructure sees when it's communicating with the Netscaler. All right. So in my case here, I'm going to use a MIP because my backend infrastructure is on the same subnet. And a net mask. Then I'm going to click Next. The next screen here, choose application. We're going to skip this, skip this step as you see here. We're going to come back to this in another video when we talk about app expert templates and then click Finish, and Exit. Okay, I've got my basic configuration for the Netscaler up and running right now. What I need to do is install a license file. What you do is go to your GUI, click on System, Licenses, and you can see there's no licenses except for Access Gateway, 10 users, and of course SSL offloading. For, because the Access Gateway Enterprise Edition here is a SSL VPN. I'm going to click on Manage Licenses and I'm going to click on Add. In uh, Now go to your where your license file is and load it up. And then click OK. When you do that Configuration must be saved and rebooted. So we're going to click yes, and when the system reboots, we're going to come back and take a look at what, ha what has happened. Here the Netscaler is ready. You should have closed your browser and started a new instance of the browser. I'll log back in, nsroot, nsroot. You can see that this version of the VPX is NS9.2 build 45.7. Now let's go back into our system, licenses, and you can see that the license file has applied. In this case, I've got a trial version of Netscaler Platinum, and all the features are enabled. Okay, folks, now you've got your Netscaler configured, up and running. Be sure to save it. Save the configuration, save the running configuration. And for right now, we've now got a Netscaler VPX installed on Zen Center. In other videos, we're going to look at how to configure this for your infrastructure to, to get the most out of your network infrastructure. So thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.